Hetty May, a city official for New York back in the 1930s, caught wind of something disturbing from the New York Times. A few young teenage boys discovered something horrendous in an open manhole located near the Harlem River on 123rd Street. After going down there himself, he too discovered something that would chill him to the bone. You won't want to miss today's episode. Teddy May was no ordinary city official. For over three decades, he held the position of Commissioner of Sewers in New York City, a position that would lead him into an unexpected adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, on February 10th, 1935, the New York Times describes how several teenage boys were shoveling snow into a manhole cover right near Harlem River and 123rd Street and had come across something grotesque and terrifying. They described an alligator roughly eight feet long moving around in the waters below. Salvatore Condalusi managed to somehow capture and kill the animal and then became an article called alligator found in uptown sewer youths shoveling snow see the animal churning in icy water which then cited salvatore condalusi as the chief participant yet questions remain about the story's authenticity however the absence of the alligator's body brought speculation that this particular event might have been a well orchestrated prank the story shook teddy may's initial dismissal of the sewer alligator legend despite this. More reports began trickling into his office from frightened sewer workers, suggesting that the legend was real. When interviewed about the incident many years later, Condalusi swears up and down that it is true. Over time, the number of alligator sightings reported became far too significant to ignore, pushing Teddy May to confront the tales head on. Resolute and intrigued, Teddy decided to journey into the watery depths himself, descending into the city's underground labyrinths. Teddy encountered the creatures he had once dismissed as mere fantasy. They were not enormous, monstrous horrors of silver screen fame, but these few feet long alligators were daunting to behold nonetheless. But the true horror doesn't lie in the fact that he found small alligators, but ladies and gentlemen the rest of what we discuss in this entire episode truly makes one want to never be near an open manhole or sewage drain. Teddy's concern was not the present threat, but the future one. That these alligators had the potential to grow and grow and grow, becoming predators capable of attacking a human being. Acting on this concern, he ordered the extermination to remove all alligators from the sewer. Yet, the stories kept coming and coming even after seemingly eradicating all of them. Reports continued and made their way to Teddy, making him question whether they had actually eliminated them all by 1937. One of the growing trends of the time was to bring up baby alligators from Florida. Once they got too large to care for, they were then flushed down the toilet into the sewer system. And once they found their way into the sewers, they would survive off whatever they could find. Rats, garbage, anything else they could eat. You might think that this is just some stupid urban legend, but guys, there are even modern day reports that further point to the reality of things existing in our sewers. For example, on July 22nd, 2013, a live eight foot long alligator was actually extracted near Central Park. It gets worse though. This alligator had been eating dogs, which is why it was captured. After examining its stomach contents, they discovered the remains of two different dogs, a few rats, and a wristwatch. Now, I know people say there's no such thing as giant albino alligators living in the sewers, reminiscent of the giant G-virus infected alligator from Resident Evil 2, but you do run across some disturbing first-person accounts from sewer workers, uh, like this one, for example. I know you get a lot of strange stories sent to you, and I wanted to send you mine. This is some real X-Files type stuff. Back in 1995, I was a drainage technician for the city of Portland, Oregon. I did that job for about four or five years. Anyway, on this particular day, it was around two or so in the afternoon. We were right around the Northwest District in downtown Portland, which is very close to Forest Park. We were busy working on some maintenance work when I was radioing into my supervisor that our job was going to take a little bit longer than initially expected. This isn't a big deal as things like this can happen when working down in the tunnels. After I got off the radio with my boss, 
a few strange things begin to happen that me and others begin to notice. As we're working, we all begin to hear the strange static sound. I'm not exactly sure if I would call it a static noise, but that's the closest I can relate it to. It began growing in volume and then would stop suddenly. This would happen for a few moments, but we just ignored it. Then. All of a sudden, we felt this huge shift in the atmosphere around us. It's very hard to describe, but it was more than just a temperature shift. It felt as if the pressure around us had changed, and all of a sudden, our floodlights completely fried. The electrical junction box had completely burnt out on both of our floodlights. Instantly, all three of us began dry heaving and collapsing onto the ground in a mixture of exhaustion and dizziness. It was terrifying, to say the least, because because we were convinced we were going to die. Fortunately, after about five or so minutes of struggling to get up off the ground, we managed to get up and get out of there. We radioed the boss and told him exactly what happened, and he was speechless. He had no idea how to explain it. For about a week afterwards, all three of us had bizarre symptoms, like complete loss of appetite, this coming and going of ringing in the ears, and strange bouts of nausea that would seem to come and go. Sometimes, I would get this burning sensation all over my hands and arms, but there was nothing you could see physically on my body. After about a week or so, all the symptoms suddenly stopped. I've been told by a few people that I've shared this with that I came into contact with high amounts of radioactivity, but I don't see how that's even possible. Like I said at the beginning, I have no explanation for any of it, but it felt like something out of an X-Files episode. Now you might be saying, but where's the proof? Pictures, videos, sounds, something. Listen. I hear you. If proof is what you're wanting, this next account might blow you away. It's not much, but it's weird. In April of 2009, a construction company known as Malfurs Construction in Raleigh, North Carolina, sent a surveillance camera down into the sewers under Cameron Village. The job was simple. Examine the infrastructure of the piping down below. However, during this investigation, they found something unexplainable, like something out of an 80s sci-fi movie. They discovered this pulsating, slimy, disgusting cluster of blobs attached to the wall. And that's not all. Here's what the actual surveillance camera captured. Apparently, these things are living organisms of some kind. Even more disturbing is these blobs actually reacted to the light on them. They would flinch and pull away. In fact, the story blew up and became viral. It quickly became known as the Cameron Village Sewer Blob. And it got so big that the internet was trying to come up with all sorts of theories and ideas about what it could be. Even the Raleigh Public Works issued a statement acknowledging that the footage was real and genuine. Genuine. Scientists just could not figure it out. It truly was the first time anything like this had been captured. Even the biologist who worked for the public utilities had no idea what it was. However, over time, scientific theories emerged that could really explain what it was. And so it was speculated that these blobs represented what's known as bryozoans, a colony of them, actually. They're small animals that stick out tentacles to feed and then retreat in small tubes when disturbed. But remember, that was just speculation because there were other biologists that disagreed with that theory. In fact, a Dr. Timothy S. Wood, who is a bryozoans expert in the Department of Biological Sciences located at the Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio, claimed this. No, these are not bryozoans. They are clumps of annelid worms, almost certainly tubifacids. Normally, these occur in soil and sediment, especially at the bottom and edges of polluted streams. In the photo, they have apparently entered a pipeline somehow, and in the absence of soil, they are coiling around each other. The contractions you see are the result of a single worm contracting and then stimulating all the others to do the same almost simultaneously. So it looks like a single big muscle contracting. Giant! Of course, everyone has their opinions because there have been other investigators that completely disagreed with that theory. 
This is because they see several problems with this explanation. In fact, it was pointed out that there is not a single individual worm to be seen on or around any of the objects shown in the video. We see more smooth cysts or sacs that move, pulsate, and throb as a whole entity instead of individuals. Now, I need to mention that even though some disagree with this theory, the tubifix worms are the official explanation. And if there's any biologist out there watching this, I hope I pronounced tube effects correctly. But my question is to you, the viewers, what do you guys think? Also, apparently from the same state comes another bizarre video. This video right here dates back to June 24th, 2015 and shows something bizarre. Oddly enough, there isn't a whole lot of discussion about it, but it appears to be from some Spanish newscast, but the quality is very poor, likely shot on a handheld potato. Upon examination, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, although there's speculation that it's a gray peering its head out from the storm drain. This video could very likely be a hoax, of course, but if it is authentic, it truly showcases something really creepy and strange living in the sewers. Personally, I'm not saying one way or the other because there's so little information on it and we live in a day and age where everybody hoaxes everything, so it's up in the air. Now, speaking of strange things living in sewers, I could go on and on with context about this next one. However, I think reading you the article will speak a lot more volume. This comes from the May 14th, 1982 edition of the Herald Magazine. Police said that they have received more than 200 telephone calls from people curious about reports of an eight foot tall man-like creature living in the city's sewer system. Buena Foot failed to appear at a monster watch, but two men using divining rods claim they saw footprints and handprints that prove a huge humanoid is nearby. Hundreds of people nationwide have called police to inquire about their safety and the safety of relatives in the area. Since five people reported Monday, they all saw the beast walking down a storm tunnel. We've had 200 to 500 calls easily, Officer Terry Branham said. We're telling people we have investigated the area and found nothing there. Dennis Reminer, a member of a group called the Special Forces Investigations, which investigates unexplained phenomena, claimed Wednesday he found footprints and handprints of the beast in a drainage tunnel. We were looking around the mouth of the tunnel when someone shouted, there's a track, Reminer said. There were a lot of people around and as we went to look, a kid stepped on the track, so we only saw the front part of the track. It was a humanoid foot with five big toe marks and about seven inches across the ball of the foot. Before we got a good, clear look at it, another kid stepped on it and completely obliterated the track. But Ruminer said he and his partner, Tom Mazula, used divining rods to track the creature and went inside the tunnel. This is where they found a handprint. Ruminer said the team made a plaque Master casted the print and took pictures of several other sets of prints discovered farther back in the cave. Frank Missinelli, manager of an apartment building near the drainage ditch, said he heard the beast but did not see it. It roared and growled just like the dinosaurs in the movies, Missinelli said. About 100 believers held a monster watch Tuesday night, but failed to spot anything resembling the beast. In May of 1963, there was a series of bizarre sightings of what people referred to as a hairy wild man. Now this occurred on the outskirts of St. Louis, Illinois in Centerville. The sightings began on May 9th and continued to escalate until police claimed they got roughly 50 calls every night from people claiming to see this thing. Often people would report seeing this hairy wild man in their yard. Of course, police never could get a view of it themselves. There were some reports, however, that mentioned this strange creature disappearing down into the sewers or tunnels. In fact, one report came from a group of kids that claimed a creature that looked half man, half woman, but also had a half head of hair and was half bald was seen around a housing project in St. Louis, specifically on 9th Street, and that it had a liking for plunging down into a tunnel located on 12th Street. By the end of the month, the sightings had completely stopped. 
Unfortunately, we'll never know what it is that they were seeing. While this next account isn't exactly in a sewer, it's located in a tunnel, specifically an abandoned train tunnel called the Cascade Tunnel. Now, this is located in the rugged Cascade Mountains of Skykomish, Washington. There have been sightings of a large hulking beast with shining yellow eyes. One such account was included in Brad Steiger's book titled Real Monsters, Gruesome Critters, and Beasts from the Dark Side. The witness, who is called Dave, tells of a horrifying account within the Cascade Tunnel. Apparently, the witness claims that they had gone to the tunnel to investigate and take photos. Then, he was about 40 feet in and he saw a pair of glowing yellow eyes. Now, he noted how remarkable they were. They weren't normal animal eye shine. As he was able to see more, he noted that the eyes belonged to a massive shadowy figure standing in the dim light. As he was able to make out more details, he realized that whatever the eyes were attached to was well over eight to nine feet tall. Incredibly frightened by this, he ran back to his truck, and Dave claimed to have heard a very loud metallic banging noise from the tunnel entrance as he did this. This was more than enough to send him roaring off in his truck for good, or at least we think. Now, just a few days had gone by, and Dave actually comes back to the site with some friends who were very curious about what he saw, what Dave swore he saw, actually. And of course, they too were hoping to glimpse it and see those same yellow eyes. And as it turns out, they all saw the same yellow eyes peering out from the darkness. Unfortunately, further details about the sighting or what was seen are pretty much non-existent. Just a plethora of speculation. Some assume it was was a reptilian humanoid. Others assume it was a spirit or some entity. Others claim it was Bigfoot, but we'll never know. And on that note, New Kensington, Pennsylvania has a very bizarre story about something strange found in the sewers. Now, this report comes from an article by a man named Michael Burke from the 1980s and it details an account of a small humanoid creature that is said to resemble half man, half dinosaur, possibly a small reptilian creature. Now, this being was seen emerging from the sewer system by a group of teenagers who apparently chased this thing. As a matter of fact, one even managed to grab onto the thing's tail, upon which it let out a scream. Ah! Now, the boy was so shaken by it that he let go. This thing reportedly slipped back away into the sewers. Now, what's really interesting about this account is that it actually occurred near Dixonville, Pennsylvania. And if you didn't know, this is the same location where several miners were killed or went missing somehow in 1944 due to what many claimed was an alleged alien creature down in the mine shafts. Do you think there's any sort of correlation or connection going on? What are your thoughts? Now, Famed paranormal author Linda Godfrey, rest in peace, was sent a disturbing account from a witness that she referred to as Pete. And get this, guys. Pete claims that he had apparently apprehended a burglary suspect with a very crazy story. Now, this is taken directly from Linda Godfrey's blog, so credit goes to her for this. The guy, burglar, went on to explain, said Pete, that he and a friend of his were fooling around by a large culvert down by the river. This particular culvert is about six feet across, easy for a man to walk in. It is inside the city of Minot and leads right out of the bank of the river. The suspect said that he and his friend had seen something in the shadows that was about seven feet tall. He told my friend that they had also stepped on what they thought was a body while they were walking in the culvert. He stated that he and his friend had ran out of there. The suspect had said that where Werewolves were living in the sewer system. While this sounds, of course, crazy, I have been noticing a few things since hearing this story. The city police department has had a couple of calls within the past couple of months concerning manhole covers being displaced or off of manholes around town. Normally, I wouldn't think twice about those types of calls, but it now strikes me as odd. Personally, I've never been able to shake the mental image of two criminals stumbling over a dead body as they flee the culvert after spotting a seven plus foot tall something watching them from the shadows. And mine it might not be the only place where people should take extra care around city water and drainage systems. Mine it does boast a river and lies near several wildlife refuges, so the habitat is certainly there. In fact, here's another account of a sewer worker who experienced something very similar down under the city of Los Angeles. Many years ago, I worked
worked as a sewer maintenance supervisor for the city of Los Angeles. There were several of us, actually. I'll keep my story very brief. The job itself was very mundane and routine. However, even though I've never been one to be into unsolved mysteries or weird, unexplainable things, this one takes the cake. I supervised a small group of two workers tasked to investigate a blockage deep into the buried sewer network right near Mulholland Drive. Within about an hour or two's time, I get a call on the radio from one of them who is completely frantic and out of breath. They just kept saying over and over that it was trying to get them and that they're not going back down there. I could barely understand what both of them were saying because they were so worked up. Once they were calmed down enough to where I could understand what they were saying, they both explained to me that while heading towards the blockage to investigate, they saw what they described as a tall reptilian looking being that charged at them through one of the tunnels. I was a person of critical thinking and logic so there's no way I believed what they were saying. However, they were absolutely terrified and scared of something. At the time, I had known these men for months, and this behavior was completely out of character. The following day, I had a different group go in to inspect and clear out the same blockage, and they reported back nothing of what the first group saw or encountered. But... The second group noticed that there was a very bizarre and out-of-place chemical odor in the air. Not exactly uncommon down there, but they said that it was very different than usual. In fact, one of the workers of that group that went the following day noted that she constantly felt like she was being watched and that it was very unusual. I don't believe in conspiracies, lizard people, the Illuminati, ghosts, or ghouls, but the fact that those men were completely terrified and that their stories matched each other's completely, even today, their stories stick with me because I'm not sure what to make of it. Now, before we go any further, we need to head across the big pond into the UK. In 2008, the Daily Mail reported that sewer workers at the Southern Waters Treatment Plant in Eastbourne, East Sussex, described something out of a nightmare. These sewer workers described a strange figure that looked like a zombie. Allegedly, this figure would follow several of these workers around and occasionally laugh at them. Sewer workers also talked about hearing strange and bizarre conversations behind tunnel walls that were muffled and indiscernible. This isn't just some tall tale or urban legend because several of these workers were so scared they refused to do their job and enter those tunnels to work. In fact, things got so bad that a man by the name of Mark Way, a sewage treatment worker, actually got permission from his boss to hire a paranormal investigator. You can only imagine how persistent these reports had to be for it to get to this point. Unfortunately, there was no physical evidence of any kind, shocker, but the investigators all admitted to feeling a strange presence and agreed that there was something unusual in the tunnels. While still in the UK, let's go back in time for just a moment. Back to the 1800s in Hampstead, England, a strange story began circulating. A story that claimed that the sewer system had a large population of bizarre black pigs. A pregnant pig somehow made its way down into the sewer system, possibly through an open drain or some other opening, and then got lost. Being a pig, it could feast on the garbage and filth and whatever else is down there. And then after she gave birth, they continued to multiply until a population of black swine would overtake the sewer system. Now, it gets more frightening because apparently these Pigs were extremely aggressive and fierce. In fact, all throughout the 19th century, people had reported sightings of very large black pigs in the sewer system, and it is commonly known as the Black Swine of Hampstead, and many people at the time believed these creatures actually lived down there. There was even an article on it from the Daily Telegraph from October 10th, 1859 that said this, This London is an amalgam of worlds within worlds, and the occurrence of every day convince us that there is not one of these worlds but has its special mysteries and its generic crimes. Exaggeration and ridicule often attach to the vastness of London and the ignorance of its penetralia common to us who dwell therein. It has been said that beasts of chase still roam in the verdant fastnesses of Grosvenor Square, that there are undiscovered patches of primeval forest in Hyde Park, 
and that Hampstead sewers shelter a monstrous breed of black swine, which have propagated and run wild among the slimy feculence, and whose ferocious snouts will one day uproot Highgate Archway. At the same time, they make Holloway intolerable with their grunting. Over time, the story just became forgotten, which could only mean two things. Either the urban legend just lost its potency and faded out into obscurity, or there was an entire population of feral black pigs that did die out. If that was the case, though, wouldn't there be bodies? Regardless of the answer, it's very intriguing when you line this story up with everything else within the video. And here you thought we were done in the UK. The joke's on you. And according to the British Bigfoot Sightings Report, there's been an entity of what's referred to as the Beast of Barmston Drain. Now, interestingly, it's noted as a half-man, half-dog creature that will emerge from a sewer drain to terrorize the countryside in whole England. One witness reported seeing this thing jump over an eight-foot-tall fence with a fully grown, dead German Shepherd in its jaws. It had been seen so many times that locals began calling it Old Stinker. As a matter of fact, historian Mike Covell allegedly has well over a dozen reports of this strange creature roaming all along the drainage. There have been so many reports that there was even an organized werewolf hunt to try and hunt it down, and you could guess how much success they had. Yeah, none. Now, Coville claimed that he knew many of the people who submitted reports and that they were honest, good, hardworking people who were genuinely terrified by the sight of whatever this thing was. They don't want notoriety or clout from their experience, just answers. Gee, guys, welcome to the club. Now, Coville actually said this. It was a bit strange, but this couple, who I've known for years, are trustworthy and very sincere people. They were genuinely scared by something. I'm just not sure what. If it was just these two people seeing something, I might start getting suspicious, but other people came forward with similar stories. I have walked the drain a couple of times armed with recording equipment during both day and night, but it's not the kind of thing you can openly ask people to participate in. Would you like to come looking for werewolves with me? Even I think it sounds crazy. But everyone who has reported sightings have been really down-to-earth people who are shaken by their ordeal. Now, the official name for the drain is Beverly and Barmston Drain, and it was built back in 1798 to drain the salt marshes out of the area. Now, what I find interesting is that this drain area has a long history of bad energy and tragedies. If you're watching this and even remotely familiar with the paranormal and how entities feed off areas and places with a lot of negative energy and tragedy, this fits right into that category. Now, this is actually taken from the British Bigfoot Sightings Report. Cawville has uncovered hundreds of tragedies spanning the length of the 23-mile-long drain, and earliest being the death of 19-year-old Master Teasdale, who drowned in July of 1824. Mr. Cawville says more than 100 people have drowned in the drain, including a double suicide where two young lovers bound their hands together and jumped in. Master Teasdale was the first but then men, women, and children followed almost at a rate of one a year. The summer months were the worst, when children would swim in Barmy Drain, and it got so bad that the whole corporation openly discussed paying for lifeguards to be stationed along the drain all during the hot months. It has a very dark history, but walking along it during the day, it is a peaceful oasis surrounded by heavy industry. The year 1892 was a particularly terrible one, when an unknown boy was pulled from the drain in May. In December of that same year, George Sowen killed his two children, aged four and six, threw them in the drain before he jumped in and drowned himself. Obviously, that drain has got some bad juju, folks. All right, guys, let's head even further east into the very reaches of Tehran, Iran. Here, ladies and gentlemen, lurks a nightmare underneath the city, just like that in New York. Rats. And we're not talking about just a rat or several rats, but we're talking huge rats. I mean, for example, look at this picture and tell me what you think. 
Now, regardless, they describe that some of these rats get up to around 11 pounds. The speculation is that the winter snows actually raise the water levels of the sewer, and so it flushes all the rats out. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Not only are these rats very large, but they actually exhibit strange physical attributes. The city council environment advisor says that he believes the rats appear to be mutated. In fact, the idea of chemically mutated rats living in the sewers is a very real possibility to these people. Ismail Karam, an environmental advisor on the city council, said this. They are now bigger and look different. These are changes that normally take millions of years of evolution. They have jumped from 60 grams to 5 kilos, and cats are now smaller than them. However, there was a disagreement with this theory. A doctor, David Baker, who works as an animal veterinarian at LSU, explained to the Huffington Post post back in 2013 that he seriously doubted the mutation theory. He suggested a different theory that explains that common rats can actually reach gigantic sizes just under the right circumstances. During the Middle Ages, black rats in Europe reportedly grew large enough and children were small enough to carry off babies. Those had to have been some big rats. Unlike New York City, though, the rats here are so large that a lot of the local population is terrified. In fact, they take it so seriously, they've actually hired teams of armed snipers with infrared scopes to hunt down and exterminate these vermin. What are your thoughts on this? Now, as we head into the next account, if you don't like spiders, this is a warning. This occurred several years back with my time in the Congo. We were stationed in the northern border region during a violent clash between rebel movements. At this time, we had constructed a series of extensive underground tunnels that facilitated our covert operations. We had tried our best not to attract too much attention. I was tasked with patrolling this particular section of tunnels that led to another above ground operation. Keep in mind that these tunnels were pitch black other than any light you would bring, and it wasn't uncommon to run into a snake that was venomous or even rats. During this time, we were also broadening the tunnel system to reach another above ground operation we had in place. Me and several others were tasked with overseeing this operation. It was during this time that we encountered some of the largest arachnids I've ever bore witness to, the Jaba Fofi, giant Congolese spiders. We encountered about four of them in a small chamber that we had dug into. One of these bit one of the men and they died shortly after from the venom. All four of these large brown spiders were disposed of and the tunnel was continued right through the small chamber they were found in. These things were easily around five feet in diameter, legs included. Massive spiders and very aggressive. Fangs the size of a knife. With my training and experience, I had never been as frightened as I was then. While I was there, a few of the locals were completely terrified to dig in the tunnels because supposedly these large spiders were burrow underground in small chambers just like the one we dug into. They talked about these things making nests near the base of trees and eating large animals like deer and dogs. Never saw any more in my time after that. The Jabba Fofi certainly exists. While we can continue to talk about giant spiders, our location goes far to the east to a mystical, magical place, Japan. Now, I know this might sound crazy to you, but there's allegedly stories about extremely large arachnids living under Tokyo, specifically in their sewers. In fact, in the 1970s, there were Tokyo utility workers that came across a startling find while in one of the many tunnels. As they were walking, one of the workers brushed up against something strange. When he went to move his hand down to swipe at it, he lifted his hand back up and saw that it was covered in spider webbing. At this point, any rational sane person would have just left. But I guess if you had a job to do, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, the workers decided to investigate further and discovered a vast network of webbing for the entire area that was several square meters. This webbing was littered with corpses of fully grown rats and cockroaches. Investigating even further revealed a tunnel opening of about 10 inches in diameter. Fortunately for the workers, they never saw what created the web 
It's possible it could have been an extremely large funnel spider of some kind, but it's not known what. And because you guys have made it this far into the video, comment down below, stay out of the sewers, please. So I know who made it to the end of the video. As always, I love you all, keep an open mind, and I'll see you guys in the very next video.